powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, President Trump and Montana Governor Steve Bullock both pushed for large scale testing of nursing home residents and staff. Well, tonight we take you to a local assisted living and nursing facility to find out what measures are moving forward to test and keep residents and employees safe. Well, that story in just a moment. But first, breaking news out of Yellowstone National Park, where even when the park is closed, people can still break the law and put themselves in danger. A woman who entered Yellowstone illegally this morning was badly burned after falling into a thermal feature. Park officials say the woman was backing up to take a photo near Old Faithful and fell. It's unclear exactly which hot spring or other features she may have stumbled into. Now, the woman that drove north toward Mammoth, where she was stopped by park rangers and then flown to an Idaho hospital. Yellowstone has been closed to visitors since March 30th due to coronavirus. Now, Governor Steve Bullock yesterday promised to protect Montana's most vulnerable. As a result, local nursing homes around Montana will soon begin testing their patients and employees. Q2's Russ Riesinger joins us from the Q2 newsroom now with more. Russ. deaths at nursing homes and assisted living facilities across the nation. It's a very vulnerable population. I talked to the head of St. John's United today. He says he's grateful for the protective measures that our state took early, but as you might guess, there are still plenty of concerns. I was, um, I was heartbroken and I was fearful. That was David Trost, the president and CEO of St. John's United reaction when he began to see the devastating toll COVID-19 was starting to take on many nursing homes across the nation, including one in Toole County, Montana, where an outbreak is responsible for almost half of the deaths in the state so far. Something similar to that could so easily happen within a community like ours. No matter how many precautions we put into place, we're only one staff person, one guest, one resident going out to a grocery store away from, from, a, um, from a cascading effect of multiple people getting infected. In the couple of months since COVID-19 became a part of all our lives, multiple changes have been made to limit visitors and screen yep. everyone coming onto the campus. You know, for our residents, um, they've been really pretty darn um, fantastic. They have been patient with us. They've been supportive of all of our um, interventions. Um, they have been extremely compliant in, in making sure that the community stays safe. Actually, the hardest it has been is for families and friends. They are struggling more with um, being separated from their from their loved ones here. Guidelines have recently been put into place to allow for some outdoor visits and soon testing will begin for everyone. A huge task with 600 residents at St. John's and 700 staff. For us, our testing will be done in phases. We'll start with our staff and um, those are the folks that are most at risk in terms of being out in the community. And then we'll move to our residents um, and we will complete the governor's um, uh, goal of trying to have all the testing done of our nursing home and assisted living by, the, by as close to the end of the month as possible. And again, that'll be quite a job with 1,300 residents and staff there. Trost says they've been holding regular Zoom meetings with health officials and with other nursing homes and assisted living facilities in the area to figure out how they can help each other out and stay on top of this. A, a pretty good job of that. Janelle? All right, thanks so much, Russ. Well, the town of Lodgegrass back under lockdown as the Lodgegrass mayor sends a strong message warning of dangers and threatening fines. Lodgegrass Mayor Quincy Dabney tells Q2 he's asking residents to only leave their homes for essential activities. This after a Lodgegrass resident tested positive for COVID-19 yesterday. Now, Dabney says people can still go to work and businesses opened under phase one can remain operational. But cruising the town and people moving between homes to visit friends is not allowed. Dabney tells us before the large grass lodge grass case came to light, he was going to lessen his restrictions, but now he expects them to stay in place until at least the first week of June. Basically starting our quarantine all over again. But I just wanted to do that to really contain it. So before we didn't want it to come in. And so now we're trying to isolate it with the, uh, with the case that is now in our town and and keep it there. 
And Dabney says Lodgegrass hasn't had a police force since 1997, so he's taken up enforcement of his orders using an education first approach. Well, today the state reports two more confirmed COVID-19 cases across Montana. There are just 19 active cases of the 460 confirmed total. Now this map here does not reflect a Jefferson County case reported over the weekend. Jefferson County health officials tell us that that man has not been in Montana for several weeks. And in Wyoming, the state reports three new cases today, two in Fremont County, the other in Laramie County. This brings the Cowboy State total to 513 confirmed cases with 55 active. Now, Montana Fair 2020 will take place this August at the fairgrounds, but it remains a work in progress as to what the fair entails. In the meantime, Metro staff is busy prepping for the May 24th high school graduation ceremonies. QT's Jay Cohn brings us a closer look. The first interstate arena at Metro Park has been empty now for eight weeks, an eerie silence to say the least, especially for a place most of us associate with big crowds and lots of noise. We haven't quite hit eight weeks yet. Uh, it seems like 800 weeks if you're on our end of things, but it's only been about eight weeks. That's where we've gone in Montana from case number one on the 13th of March to where we are today. In just 12 days, the arena will open to the public for the first time since the pandemic shutdown, hosting high school graduation ceremonies for Billing Skyview, Senior and West with reserved seating for all ticket holders. Seating will be twos and then skip two, two and then skip two full rows like the one I'm sitting in right now will be empty between so that we can assure physical distancing on the part of people. Uh, they'll also receive masks when they come to the event. They will have temperature checks when they come to the event. So we're doing everything possible to make sure that when you come to the school district graduations for uh, school district two, that you're going to be safe as, as safe as we can possibly make it. We can't wrap you in bubble wrap, but we're going to do the very best job we can. Metro Park is also acquiring special backpack spray units so its staff can sanitize the entire arena in about an hour. Beyond graduation, Massey is focused on Montana Fair that starts August 7th. It's been happening in Billings every summer for the past 105 years. But Massey says this year they're working to take the fair back to its original roots. We're really focusing on agriculture is essential and fairs are essential to agriculture. So we're working to expand the ag footprint for this year's Montana Fair. And with 87 days to go, we're scrambling a little bit because, as you know, everything changes every day as far as this business is concerned. And while Massey says there will be entertainment at this year's Montana Fair, no word yet on what that will entail. Night shows won't be happening nor will there be any headline music. Speaking of music, three big concerts are set for the first Interstate Arena beginning this fall. Toby Keith in September, followed by Cher, then Luke Combs. But currently all those events are in limbo, while health officials determine what is and isn't possible in this new COVID-19 world. In Billings, I'm Jay Cohn reporting for MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Jay. And what about the carnival at this year's fair? Well, Massey tells us he's been in contact with the carnival operator who believes they can make a go of it, even assuming attendance will likely be less than half of normal. The final approval, however, rests with the county health officer. Well, Montana Senators John Tester and Steve Daines are rolling out what's being called a rancher relief program. It's designed to help hard hit Montana cattle producers get better prices and markets for their product. Tester is a co-sponsor of a bill to require large meat packers to buy at least half of their cattle on the cash market. He is also pushing to include language in any upcoming coronavirus relief bills to allow Montana meat processors to sell their product outside the state. Senator Danes is a co-sponsor of the first bill and also signed on to the second initiative. Now, Danes says the measure will help strengthen the food supply chain and encourage transparency in prices. Both senators are renewing a push to reinstate country of origin labeling for meat produced in America. Now, they say that labeling, which is opposed by big meat packers, will help Montana ranchers. You can look at me, I eat a lot of meat, and I'll tell you, if I knew it was coming from the United States versus Brazil or Argentina, I'm, I'm picking up that package that has made in USA on it every time. Tester and Danes hope there is enough bipartisan pressure on Senate leadership to take up these proposals.
Well, high schools across the area are gearing up for their after graduation parties and celebrations. Now, one of those high schools is Skyview, which is planning a parade right after graduation on May 24th at 11 a.m. Now, that parade will start at the Metra. The chair and treasurer of Skyview's Falcon finale says the committee decided to do the parade as an alternative way to hold an after party for students and give them the homecoming parade they missed out on this year. Now, Skyview has also teamed up with Master Loop to put on a virtual car wash, which started last Friday. So kind of trying to, you know, make sure if anybody wants to help, we're open and available to any ways in receiving that help. Um, and we kind of just track that through our Facebook event. Um, you know, we post some updates and some totals and we've really reached out um, to just the Heights community as a whole. Now the school is trying to promote the sense of Skyview Strong and hope people will help support the graduates and donate money for the parade. To learn more, visit the 2020 Falcon Finale Facebook page. Well, three puppies touched down in Great Falls this afternoon to be greeted by their new trainers. Now, the dogs come from Santa Rosa, California, and will spend the next year and a half being raised by volunteers with canine companions. The organization is dedicated to helping people with disabilities by providing highly trained assistance dogs at no charge. The Northwest Region Chapter President says it's hard to eventually give the dogs up, but it's worth it because all the dogs go on to help others. We, when we give them up, it's really hard. It's like sending your child off to college. It's, it's the best way that I can tell somebody. Um, we love them. We prepare them for that adventure, that next step in their journey that they are going to take. And they are all um, happy dogs. When they walk away, I always think, are they going to look back at me? And they never do. You hand them to the trainer and they just walk with their heads high, their tails wagging, and they become somebody else's miracle. Wow, Canine Companions is always looking for volunteer puppy raisers, and more information can be found on its website. Ahead on tonight's 530 News, you'll be seeing purple differently for this year's Relay for Life of Yellowstone. So put away your sneakers and jump in the car. And in sports, Scott introduces your five male finalists for tomorrow's Midland Roundtable Athlete of the Year. And coming up in weather, we've had showers for the last few days, and guess what? There's plenty where that came from. We've got a lot of batch of moisture moving our way. We'll tell you all about it coming your way in just a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.